hello and welcome back to the channel so for the past few weeks in my spare time i have been playing in elden ring which means i've been dying a lot and uh, the game is so interesting that i decided whether uh, we can decided to see whether we can recreate some of its parts in godot and in today's episode i wanted to show you how to create this very simple animated controller that can be used uh, with a Souls-like game. Uh, one interesting part about it is that we have the animation switching here where we switch from the focused stance uh, in a battle in Souls-like game. Oops. And the standard movement set. We have some animations here, we have animation fading, we have jumping. So yeah, let's get to it and probably in the next episode we'll take a look at the simple combat. Of course, as you can imagine, this uh, the aim of those videos is not to recreate um, Elden Ring, but just to create a simple platformer-like controller that has some resemblance of Souls-like games. Let's get to it. Mm -hmm. To get started, let's first discuss the assets that we will be using in the project. Uh, this come uh, from uh, Kkit Adventurers when it comes to characters. Uh, some are available for free, but if you'd like to extend it, uh, you are able to just purchase the uh, asset pack. And, uh, they come rigged and animated, so this is cool because we don't have to go to uh, any animation tool to generate the animations for those. And when it comes to uh, building the dungeon, which we'll do a little bit later we'll also rely on the kkit pack and this is so cool um the assets also will be in the repository but i encourage you to basically uh, get those and download these um and add it to the project yourself so you can build even more extensive levels if you'd like so let's go to Godot first and I will create new project. I will find a suitable place for it. I'm going to name this uh, something funny like poor man's Elden Ring tutorial because it's, it's not really Elden Ring. But let's name it like this, select current folder, render, forward, create, and edit. And first things first, I'm going to start by doing a little bit of setup. So let me start by bringing in all the assets that we need. So I'm going to basically get uh, let's see what do we need uh, I believe everything is in an assets folder so let's grab that and let's add this here uh, we will use GLTF so we don't need FBX so we can just uh, press disable FBX and restart these are just different format for uh, 3D uh, that will contain all the information that we need like texturing, rigging, meshes and everything. And if we go to characters, GLTF, there's a set of um, set of characters that we might use. There's a mage, right? There's a knight, a barbarian, and other choose the one you'd like the most the most of what we do here will be transferable 
or maybe we will even make it so that you can choose different characters but i'm going to start with the most uh, classic character which is going to be knight and i'm going to click re-import okay and with that i can just uh let's start by creating the main node the empty main node this is pretty much a standard for me let's save it in a folder called scenes and to make it work i can just can i just drag and drop this uh, character body and i should be able to just drag it out and now we have it in our scene named root which is not the best name really uh, we have here the warning about uh, lacking the uh, lack of the uh, collision object but this is fine we can double you can open this as a scene and what we will do is out is we will get this warning about the glb file being automatically imported uh, we will make changes to that so we will create new inherited scene from that here we have it first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to actually rename this to layer and then press ctrl s and save it in scenes perfect so we have that and if we will run our project uh, let's first select the main scene and let's go here into scenes folder and select this at main scene if i'm going to run this well we will not see anything okay but this is not a problem we will handle this in just a second first thing that we have to have is uh, a camera to actually render something into our screen so let's add the camera and actually we'll add this camera here in our oops in our player and since we have a player right now i should be able to drag it and then i can remove the root because this is this is now the new inherited scene that we'll be able to manipulate. Okay. Let's start very quickly by adding the camera 3D. And let's just position it so that we can render like anything. So I'll rotate it. Let's see. Uh, 180. And then a little bit down right and now that we have camera we can see something on the screen even though it does not look very good um so i think this is going to be for our initial setup we'll extend it uh, in the next section but right now we have our rigged uh, character in the scene and we have something on the screen so this is a good place to stop let's continue our setup by adding some lighting so that our uh, rendered game looks a little bit better i will go to main and i will start by adding directional light 3d and this is to simulate the uh, light from a far away uh, source like a sun. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to position it. Uh, let's see, in a transform um, here. So minus 105, 3, 7, six and 16 and if we scroll far away we can find our sun right here um, then there's the rotation of the sun because if we run this right now 
you can see some sunshine uh, on our character but we need to also rotate this and uh, through whether you will be able to see it but if you rotate your sun it will change how it uh, influences the uh, models in your game so the rotation is going to be minus 65 80 75 and this should help a little bit when it comes to lightning of our character but it's still a little bit too little so what we can do is we could add global uh, illumination from the world environment and to do this to do this i will have to add world environment node uh, and this is like the global node that influences post-processing additional effects in lightning and i will add this and i will create new environment and for now there's gonna be only one thing that i'm interested in and this is sdfgi which is global illumination and i will turn this on now we can see that this looks a little bit better uh, let me see about the settings um this can stay pretty much all all like that next thing we're missing is the uh some kind of floor so let's add this what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add a static body uh, and i'm going to call this floor Mm, and uh, we need two things for that it's going to be mesh instance 3d with a mesh that's going to be box mesh to represent uh, our floor and i will set this to be 50 1 50 Okay, and when it comes to the uh, position, this is going to be zero, zero, zero. So everything is good. And I will try to bring my wonderful player on top of it. So I'm guessing this has to be somewhere around here, which should be zero. 0.5 and 0 when it comes to transforms let's see how it looks right now way better definitely so at least we can see what is going on and for our floor we also have to have the collision shape 3d which is going to be box shape of size of 51 50 and let's see yes this looks precisely as i wanted and for all of this to work we'll just set up collision layers right now so let's go to 3d physics and we'll have a player and we'll have a floor and we will be able to assign layers so the floor is layer 2 and it collides with layer one of course nothing is going to happen yet because we didn't add any script or any collision shape to our player so let's go into player scene and let's add the collision so we will need collision shape 3d and we will use a capsule so here you can find new capsule shape 3d and we of course have to position it correctly and set the radius and height as needed so the radius and height 2.5 when it comes to height and then position it at 1.25 and if we scroll right here we could probably should be able to see that this should align very nicely on the feet of our 
on the feet of our player. Okay, so we have that done. What else do we need? Uh, we will need the uh, input map to control our player. So let's go and define the actions and this is going to be left, right, forward, back, um, jump, and focus, which means that we'll switch from one type of movement to the other. Um, and we'll assign A, D, W, S, space, and tab. Okay, and now we have everything set up. If we run our game, right, we see that everything still renders. Okay, very nice. So I believe in the next episode, we can start coding our character movement and, or maybe we'll take a look at the camera first. So I'll see you in the next section. Let's start by working on our camera. So first thing that I'm going to do is I will add a new child node and this is spring arm 3d um, and this is what we can use to attach the camera to a player and this node will also help us when it comes to handling the camera movement and collision where near uh, walls or obstacles and i will move the um, camera as a child of the spring 3d Perfect, let's change the position of the spring arm. So let's go here and change this to 266. So this is now above, right? And I will also change the location of the camera. Uh, or do I need to? No, not really. Okay, so now if I play this, you can see that this is looks closer to a first person perspective but we'll fix it very easy there is a set of values that we need to change for our uh, spring and camera to work first is the spring length i will set this to five and also we can change the margin from default to 0 0.01 and then after that i will reset the camera values here so here and here and what else because right now we're looking backwards we're looking at the front of our uh, character but as you can see it's already working so the spring arm is pushing camera off of the character and now we still have this 3d um 3d camera set I mean, third person um, camera set. So there's another thing that we will have to consider. And this is the orientation of our player versus camera. So if we click on our player, we can see how the axis for it are defined. So this is the Z at the front. Uh, and then we have the x here so the positive uh, x is actually left and then we can take a look of our at our rig and um, we can see that it's aligned with what is set to our player but what i would like to get actually here is to have the um, positive x-axis be right instead of left so I can do that by going into rig, uh, into the skeleton 3D, and here you can see our whole skeleton and the attachments. I can change the transform to be rotated 
180 around y okay and now if we take a look at it we can see that the x axis positive is a right hand and now i have the proper setup for this the one strange thing that i will have to maybe consider is that the z um, axis is backwards but i can live with that uh, again if this is not what you wanted and you prefer your front z axis to be up front but then your x axis to be on your left right if this is okay with you then go for it well, what i will do is i'm going to rotate my character 180 just because i would like my right side to be aligned with positive x axis and now we achieve this uh, wonderful uh, third person kind of look but we are not able to manipulate our um, our player so before we fix that let me see whether we can do something about our mesh and let's see there should be something like um, material override okay and then maybe we can change the albedo to something more grayish let's see how that looks okay a little bit better so we have that um and what else do i need here i believe this is a place where we can start coding uh, our camera and this is going to be very simple we would like our camera to follow the rotation of our mouse just like it does in dark souls or elden ring so here on the spring arm not on the camera in this into the spring arm i'm going to attach a new script and i'm going to call this camera controller beauty and this is going to be rather simple i'm going to export mouse sensitivity i'm going to set this to 0.5 and i'm going to export the reference to player um, Or I don't even need the reference player. Way better. The less code, the better. In ready, I will change the input mouse mode to say input mouse mode captured. We're basically going to disable the um, cursor in our game window. Uh, but that might be a little bit problematic for you because you might wonder, well, how to, do I close the window? And the shortcut for this is F8. And even if I hover over this, you can see stop running the project. This is the F8 shortcut. Right. So basically what we have to uh, write right now you know, with our capsule, with our player, is the movement of the mouse around X axis and around Y axis so that we can control uh, the camera movement left and right but this will be um, a little bit um, constrained when it comes to y-axis because we will only allow the movement from 30 degrees to just do this and this to minus oops to minus 30 degrees okay but then on the x-axis you are able to move from 0 to 360 so go full circle okay let's actually hide this so how to do this uh, we will not set up any kind of input from input map but rather we'll use the function called unhandled input 
and if you don't know what it is uh, if given input is not uh, consumed by any input functions um, it will just be passed into that unhandled input and this is very good because we can handle the mouse movement in here but first we have to decide whether this is of a concrete type specific type that we are looking for is input event mouse motion okay and with that we can find event relative i hope this has the description the mouse position relative to previous position from the last frame so what is the delta between the uh, last frame and this frame when it comes to the mouse position and we can use this uh, we can use i can see that i named my file incorrectly there shouldn't be a typo here it's camera controller okay so with this we need to decide how our spring arm will rotate around our player because remember that uh, if we take a look at this from the top our camera is attached to a player and this is like from the top view so our camera is attached by a spring arm right and we need to rotate that spring arm correctly and give an axis to give our camera the sense of fluid movement so let's handle the rotation x first so rotation degrees x is equal to minus equals event relative y times mouse sensitivity and let's see what that gives us okay this is pretty cool because we already can control the position of our mouse the problem is that, as i said we have to restrict this to um some degree so to control that easily i'm going to find some properties here this is going to be min uh, x degrees and this is going to be minus 30 and max x degrees and this is going to be 30 and then i can just say right here rotation degrees x is equal to clamp rotation degrees minus 30 30 and now we should have that rotation restricted uh, oh sorry we should use um of course mean x degrees and max x degrees and we should use x here of course and with that we are now able to only move uh in a set of those degrees so that's all that we can move and this is fine i believe this is going to be enough but of course you can change those values to for example 45 degrees and now you have more control but you will be clipping into the floor so not something that i would like so let's say 30 and maybe here minus 45 to just go higher okay this this is good enough for me okay next step is to actually handle the rotation around the y-axis so this is going to be rotation degrees so this is going to be the horizontal axis because oh let's see just add new layer oh, i should know how to clear all of this with like one stroke right 
Oh no, that's not helpful. Um, how do you clear this? So about the rotation, if this is our player, then this is going to be the the Y axis and the rotation uh, around the Y axis is actually the horizontal rotation. The same goes the other way. As you can see right now in our game, what we have here is the rotation around X axis, which is vertical rotation. And this is correct because this is the X axis. So rotating around it moves us vertically, right? You just have to have some special awareness about this, but this is Y axis and then this is X axis. And this will give us the mm, horizontal rotation while this already gave us the vertical rotation. So rotation degrees Y is pretty much the same. Event relative X times mouse sensitivity. But then we need to, to make it fluid we need to wrap around it so we give the user the ability to move constantly uh, around the um, around the y axis so we will take the rotation degrees and we'll wrap from 0 to 360. what does it mean uh, in, uh, in practical terms that does mean that if this value, right, gets calculated to, for example, 372, since we wrap around from 0 to 360, it's going to, have to be like, okay, so minus 360. So this is going to be 12 degrees, right? That's why we wrap around this. And it works the other way around, right? If we get the value of minus 15 degrees, since we're wrapping around, that's gonna be like, okay, minus 360 plus, or minus 15 uh, degrees plus uh, 360 degrees, that's gonna get calculated into three, four, five degrees. So we're just wrapping in the range of, from zero, to 360. Okay, let's see how this works. And now we can get this cool, smooth camera movement around X and Y axis simultaneously. So this is kind of great. I like this already. Um, so yeah, in the next section, we'll start looking at the animations animation tree and coding the uh, coding the uh, movement of a player. I see you there. So in this section, we will discuss the movement and the animations for our player. If you go to the animation player that was automatically attached to our player node, you will find lots of predefined animations that we can just play right and we have those for block block hit right so there's a lot basically everything you uh, would need to have for a simple um, simple funny tune like um, souls like game the problem is though how to actually control all of these animations and make them work with our code. Uh, what we could do is use the animation player and play them all by hand and find um, every single property like looping or not directly in the animation player. But 
this is actually uh, not the best, not the most efficient solution, given the fact that the animations can be uh, more and more dynamic and complex, and the output of the final um, animation that we should play in a given moment in a game should be also calculated dynamically. And to control our animation player, the node that we can use, which is a very cool node, is um, animation tree. And this is used for advanced animation transitions, and you will see how powerful it is. There are a few properties that we have assigned here to start. One is, of course, the animation player and we'll assign the animation player available in our nodes tree. And then there's a tree root. And here we have few options, like a single animation, state machine, which is just a graph of transition, blend space 2D, blend space 1D, and blend tree. In our case, We'd like to use the blend tree because it gives us the most control. And um, if you would like to know basically how it works, uh, it has an output. And then it's basically like a graph of animations and you can do some operations on those animations. And then based on this calculate the final animation that should be played but what is interesting about this um, node uh, sections um, the graph sections is that it doesn't have to be a single animation this also can be animation tree or animation state machine which actually is very powerful because you can mix and match and nest um, animations within uh, each other to create a more complex tree that calculates the final animation here. So if we choose the animation blend tree, you will see that what we have here is like a graph, okay? And here I can just add a simple animation just a single one, let's say walk and make it into the output and this will not play, right? And if I will find that animation, let's see, walking A and I will, um, can change loop mode animation embed in another scene. Okay, so if you uh, would like to set the walking to looping, to play in a loop, and you will get that warning can change loop mode of animation inherited, embedded in another scene, what we can do is just, um, how do you do it? Click on the root node player and choose clear inheritance. And now, Let's see, now we are able to loop it without any problem. So that's how you do uh, that and handle that issue. Now we have our single animation playing, right? Of course, we're not moving yet at all. Uh, but uh, to handle our uh, locomotion animation, we need actually a little bit more uh, complex um, animation tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that single animation and I will search for state machine. And we will call this on focused locomotion state machine and output of that will go to the output right now. So if we press open editor here, we will go one level deeper into our animation blend tree. And here you can see the path 
that we are taking. So here's the root, and if I open the editor, here's the another breadcrumb describing it. Okay, so we'll use that state machine to handle the um, the animation of jumping and a movement. So first, what I will add is I will add, uh, let me see, um, yes, I will add blend space 1D. And let's move this up. And blend space 1D is basically, uh, is basically uh, a space in which we can define some threshold values, whatever they are, and then we can set up the animation near or next to each of the values. And as this value change, for example, this could be our, this value could be our velocity. Uh, as this value change, so will the animation and the um, Godot will gradually start to transition and blend from one animation to the other. So if we take a look at this, we can specify that this is, for example, like walk back animation because the velocity is minus one. And here, if we don't have any velocity, this could be idle. And then this could be, for example, walk front or something like this. And based on the value of the velocity that we pass to this animation blend tree, Godot will try to blend those animation and display, uh, display the blend state of animation between one defined point and the other. So let's see what we can do here. I'm going to call this on a foc focused locomotion. Okay. And then I'm going to edit this. And then let's see what we can define here. Uh, we'll go from minus one to one. This is correct. And here, I would like to add animation and I will add idle when we're close to zero. And since this is on the focus of locomotion, I will add a running A on both sides of our trees. Tree, blend uh, space, sorry. So running A. So here, if we take a look at the select tool, here we have running A, here we have idle, here we have running A. Okay, so then we can just transition from the start, so we can connect the node from here to here. Okay. Um, and let's see, this is correct. Then what I would like to add are a single animation for jumping. So let's find jump start. Let's find jump idle and let's find jump land. And we have to decide how to actually connect this. So definitely from the movement on the ground, we can go to jump start. Then from jump start, we should go to jump idle and then finally land. And after landing, we should go back to locomotion. But if you take a look at this, these connections, we could we can click on them and define some properties here. So first is uh, how should we switch? We should switch at the end or sync. That means the time of one animation should transfer to another and when we press space we should transform automatically but then there's advanced mode and there are three properties here enabled auto and disabled disabled means 
currently the transition is blocked and it's not possible. Auto means that it will automatically move from um, this state to this state and then there's enabled. This is what interests us the most because it's allow, uh, it allows us to trigger this via code. Okay, uh, then after jump start, we should uh, auto advance to jump idle. And in jump idle, we should switch this to enabled to control um, to control uh, where do we play the jump land animation. And finally, here we should set this to advance uh, to mode auto but we should switch at the end of the animation so after jump land place right we should go back to locomotion okay and then we have all of this uh, there's also one more thing i would like to um, to define here at the top of the transition you will find x fade so to make our movement less robotic, we can define uh, the fade time and fade curve to basically um, tell um, Godot how much time it should take to blend one animation and the other when changing the states. So let's switch this to point uh, point three, point three, point three, and point three okay perfect and now if we go here and we play we will see that <laughs> the walking animation played and stopped right but uh this isn't what we really wanted so let's go into coding right now so i believe this section is long enough and we can start coding in the next section okay let's get to coding the movement of our player so i'll uh, add a new class let's maybe create a new folder called the scripts and let's open it up and create and we have some default code here uh, i believe this will make us move and make it sink through the ground okay so to avoid that let's start by setting the layer to player and collision to two and now it stops us so this is really good uh, in animation player, I'm going to change this to idle because that's what interests us and I will get rid of basically everything here, maybe except for, um, for those. Okay, let's start by adding the class name. And we'll write a helper function to help us with getting the input. So let's call get input with delta passed in. And let's write this. So this is going to be our function to read the input and I get the velocity set up. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read the current velocity y and this is so that we can maintain uh, our uh, jump and fall down velocity. And I will reset this to zero but that doesn't matter because we have that value stored here already. Can I maybe make the font a little bigger so that you can 
see it more clearly okay next i will read the input and let me think about this we probably need to store this input so input and this is a vector two and it put there are many ways we could read this but i will do input get vector and i'm going to pass here left right forward and back and the order actually matters because if you go to the docu documentation you see negative x positive x negative y and positive y okay so we have that then what we could also calculate is direction and this is going to be vector free where we pass the input x zero for y and input y for z right so this is one thing that you have to remember when we're reading the the input uh, we are reading from the x and y so this is a vector three a vector two sorry for the x and y but then we need to transform this into uh, velocity and direction and the direction and the velocity this is actually three dimensional uh, this is z of course and this is x so when constructing that vector three we need to pass input x here zero for the y direction and then for the forward vector which is z in here you can see that forward and backwards is z we must pass the input from y because we're taking the vector two of our input and translating it into direction and velocity so going back here i can just say and this has to be rotated taking into account the rotation of the spring arm so vector three up and we need the reference to a spring arm and this is going to be rather easy because i can just say reference or maybe node come on node references and i'll just drag hold control and now i have my spring arm 3d reference okay and then this we can use here as spring arm 3d um and we need a y rotation here rotation y so this gives us direction and then we can just say velocity is equal to lerp which is linear interpolation of current velocity and we need something like uh, movement speed so let's see we can just do exports um, and we'll do export move speed 30 for now so this is going to be move speed um times direction and this is delta and we should give uh, some acceleration here so all of this we can use to actually 
give some inertia to our player and um, so that it takes him a little bit of time to get into the max speed so to define the uh, acceleration we can go to our export and let's say export bar acceleration and set this to 15 and with this we should be able to have at least the basic way of moving left and right and back and front and also what is cool is if i will rotate my camera we decide what the front vector is not based on the uh, player skeleton but on the spring arm rotation so here i am rotated 90 degrees uh, compared to the z axis of our character and now if i press w i will move in the direction of the rotation of camera which is basically how dark souls or elden ring controller uh, works like okay now the thing is i would like to get those animations going just a little bit of tea and to do this uh, I have to calculate my animation velocity and um, I can tell you why that is so let's do this in process because it's not physics related so basically our input mm, let me write that for you if we take a look at our input here that we read it will change from minus one to one instantly based on the um on the uh, keystroke right and then for the horizontal this is going to be s and w right but if we take a look at our animation tree and let's go here and let's go here right we actually don't want that instant change right because this is a blend space so this is like a spectrum right and when changing from left to right we'd rather have those blended like um linearly from one point to another rather than snapping from minus one to zero to one it would look very very robotic and very staggered so to achieve this what we need to do is we need to calculate the uh the smooth transition between the states in our blend space here okay and to do this let's see uh, to do this i can go here and start this calculation the first thing i need is the velocity delta which is how much uh, smoothing should we do in this frame and this input minus current velocity and we of course need to define the current velocity but this is just so that we could hold that reference to the previous velocity between the frames so i can just say current velocity vector two okay uh we are here then i can say uh we need something like locomotion animation transition speed meaning how much do we transition 
So let's export that. And I'm going to say export var locomotion animation transition speed. Basically, basically how fast should we move in uh, in our uh, blend space, right? So how fast should we move here? And I can say if velocity uh, delta length is greater than locomotion animation transition speed, then velocity delta is equal to velocity delta normalized times locomotion animation transition speed. And then I can say current velocity plus equals velocity delta. That should all work. And then I need to calculate the animation velocity, which is going to be current velocity. Um, but we need to switch the y direction of the velocity because we rotated our rig 180 degrees, if you remember. And then all of this does actually nothing yet. What we need to do is actually set the parameter of the animation tree. And here in the parameters, you can see in the unfocused locomotion state machine. So in here, I can find unfocused locomotion, uh, which has a value here. So this is our 1D blend space. And it, it has a parameter here uh, that states blend position. And I can copy the property path and say animation. Oh, we need the reference to animation tree. So let's drag and drop this. And I can say animation tree set and pass this copied property here and pass animation uh, velocity here. Okay. So we set the parameter and we pass the animation velocity here. Let's see whether this works. And the answer is no, nothing happens. And this is probably due to the fact, let's see, we have animation editor here. We have that, we have that, and this is auto advancing. So first thing that we have to fix for it to work is to go to our animation player and take a look at the animations that we're using. So let's open it up. Idle, make it looping. And you can see already in our 3D preview that this animation is now playing. And then for running, also have to make it loop. Let's try this again. So we are playing the idle animation but then running is still not working and i know what might be the problem if we take a look at the blend position this is like single float value while what we are passing here in the animation tree blend position is animation velocity which is actually vector 2 so let's calculate the final velocity value. So we have to check basically which value of the vector is bigger. Um, and well, uh, is it X or is it Y? So let's take search for max and we'll pass here absolute value of 
animation velocity x and animation velocity y. So this will result. Uh, oh, sorry, this should be like this. So it will just take the maximum float value of those two. And then we can use that velocity value here. And now, as you can see, it is working. We have uh, we have our animation playing. And if we stop, we go back to idle. The one problem is um, we should turn into the direction of our movement when we are moving left or right. So let's take a look at how we can fix this. Oh, uh, let me see. Um, so in the physics process, we can say if velocity length is greater than If it's greater than, uh, I was about to sneeze. Jesus. Um, if it's greater than 0 0.01, then I can say I should rotate the rig itself. So we need the reference to the rig. So here I can just boop, get the reference to that. And then I can say, um rig rotation dot y is equal to lerp angle because we would like for it to go smoothly with rig rotation as a starting value but the problem is how do you find the final value right and to help with that we can find the uh we can use wonderful mathematical function called atan2 basically how it works is a great shortcut if you know the uh, velocity x and then if you know one vector and an other vector, you can find the angle here, right? By using a tan two between the X and Z values, right? So we know that value and we know that value and now we can calculate this angle here. So let's try using a10 with velocity x and the velocity that and it's not going to be correct and then right now let's use delta times 10 okay so you can see we have something but definitely we're not turning into the right directions and this is because all of the rotation and also because of how r 2 function is working. But we can fix that rather easily by specifying the correct size. We know that the uh, z value, uh, z vector is opposite in our case. It faces opposite direction. That's why we can apply the minus here. And this is almost good when it comes to horizontal movement but then the movement front and back is also um, set incorrectly but this can be solved easily by just applying another minus right here and we have the basic of our movements working right now if i turn my camera anywhere it's still it is still relative to the camera okay so this is really good. 
one thing though um, that we might see is how fast we interpolate between uh, those turning turns if I set this to Delta you can see that it takes a lot of time for us to turn right so I'm gonna add a direction change factor here and I will also export this here and set this to 10 and now it will go way more smoothly right but if you think this is too much maybe change this to 5 I think this is better we can see him rotating actually so it's not too fast but fast enough cool so the next section will probably handle switching from um, focused or unfocused uh, movement to a uh, focused movement mode With what we have right now, the next step is to add the focus locomotion state machine and make it work. So going to our animation tree, we will add new state machine. So let's click right and choose state machine. And I'll call this focused locomotion state machine let's open it up and let's start adding what we need here so what we'll need first is going to be a uh, blend space 2d this time so this is 2d not 1d as we had previously and let's edit it now you can see what we have is x y right now and we will be adding um some animations here so let's start by what triangle exists i know let's add the animation and first let's found idle and we need to place it in zero zero so this is fine then on the uh, right side we'll have running strafe right at the edge and on the other side we'll have running straight left and then here we will have walking backwards and I'm going to set this at minus uh, 0.5 and we don't have running backwards animation but we can live without this but then we need to add walking a animation at 0.5 and then we will add uh, let me see running a animation and that creates the pen space if we now go to 3d and we can try and play with uh oh it's not connected yet so <laughs> it's not going to update but this is what we should have and then in a uh, focus locomotion state machine let's add the transition between start and that one and then basically we have to repeat our jumping that we also have here there probably is a better way to extract this and build the um, blend tree so we, that we do not repeat the jumping uh, but I find out this works for now. So let's add um, jump start, jump idle, and jump land. Let's build the transitions. Okay. Each and every one will have point three. So let's add that. Point three and point three and point three 
and let's set up how they should transition. So here we have um, switch immediately immediate and enabled. Then here we have, let's see, immediate and auto. So the defaults, then we have, what we have here is immediate and enabled. And here we have, let's see, immediate, I mean, add end and auto that should cover this uh, state machine. But we'll need to have the ability to switch between our uh, state machine from focused animation state to unfocused animation state. And to do that, we can use transition. So let's go here. Uh, we will add two inputs and we'll call them focused and unfocused we will set the x fade time to 0.3 and then we can just connect unfocused to unfocused focus to focused and set this to output okay and let's see what we have at the very beginning not much uh, as you can tell because we did not plug that in yet but let's see how our animation tree now looks from the outside. So what we have is a transition and transition request. Focus locomotion state machine with blend space. Set this to zero, zero. And our previously set up unfocus locomotion. And with this done, we can go back to coding. So what we will start with is I'm going to go here and create the anim describing the current movement mode. So this is going to be rather either focused or unfocused. I will also um, get the information about current movement mode. So let's add export movement mode of type movement mode and i'm going to start with unfocused uh, what i will also need to have are two other variables that's gonna make my my life better and this is going to be um, export var focus locomotion state playback path stuff type string and unfocused locomotion state playback path it's also a string and to keep track of those i will have current state playback Ah. okay i believe that's it and to fill those out i'm just going to go to animation tree and here let me see i have playback and i can copy property path and this is for unfocused and going back here so this is unfocused locomotion state playback path and I'm checking that this is unfocused and this is a playback, so this is correct. And then for the focused, I'm also going to copy property path and put it right here. So those properties should be available to me. Perfect. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a function that will allow us from one animation state to the other. So function switch movement movement mode. And let's find the transition. It is going to be focused. If movement mode is 
equal to movement mode focused else is going to be unfocused okay and then i can say that uh current state playback path is equal to focused locomotion state playback path if movement mode equal to movement mode focused else it's on oops and i get some autocomplete here unfocused locomotion state playback path so based on the movement mo mode i applied focused locomotion state playback path or unfocused locomotion state playback path to the current state playback path and then um in my um animation tree you can see that we have a transition request right here so what i'm going to do is just let's see copy property path and say animation tree set transition request to the transition so it's going to transition from focus to unfocused if i request that right okay um so this should be good and then in ready function i'll make sure that we have that set up properly so i'm just going to call switch movement mode and with current movement starting movement mode set to unfocus we should be in, in the right place or at least that's what i'm hoping for yeah so this is all still working with our unfocused movement mode now it's going to be time to handle switching to focused movement mode so first things first uh, we will need to uh, read the input so actually what i'm going to do is i'm going to add input callback or listener or whatever and i'm going just going to say if input is action just pressed focus or maybe i should change the name of that to switch focus but we know what this is doing this is changing the movement mode um to focused if current movement mode is equal to movement mode unfocused else movement mode focused and then we call switch movement mode so let's see whether this is working so i'm unfocused and then i press tab and okay now it's not working still but we know that something is happening at least okay so we have to figure out why this might be not working and the one reason is of course um we do not set the uh proper um blend position right here so let's see this this is where we do that right the plant position but to um for it to make sense we have to check if movement mode is equal to movement mode unfocus this should happen else in case we are focused we should do animation tree set we need the path to that blend position so let's copy property path okay and then we just pass animation velocity and let's see where this helps us a little bit so we are unfocused and then we are focused but uh, okay one thing that we are definitely doing here is we are not having our animations set to looping so this is um, 
let's see this is working backwards and this would loop then we have rank strap left left rank straight right let's try this again so i switched and it looks like it's working but it seems that our rotation is just everywhere right now so let's take a look at this okay so we will go to physics process and this is our initial rotation that we we're setting um setting but i believe this should be uh, done only if the movement mode is equal to movement mode unfocused else let's see uh, we will use l if um, the velocity length is greater than 0 0.1 and movement mode equal to movement mode un uh, sorry focused what we'll do is we'll do re rotation y is equal to lerp and lerp angle is what we are looking for rig rotation rotation y spring arm with the rotation y and then what we have is delta uh, times how did we call that parameter this is direction change factor let's see whether this helps so this is working and we're switching and right now yeah what we have is our focused movement so this is how we can handle that you can see that the player is every single time we are we are walking we are facing the uh spring arm rotation so like we're facing the camera and then can i shoot back uh it seems that we cannot switch back yet so let's see why this isn't working because we should be able to switch between those um movement mode focus if movement mode is unfocused else this should be of course unfocused okay let's try right now so we starting we are starting as unfocused then we are focusing and we're unfocused again perfect so this is how we can set up that switch and in the last section we will handle jumping hi guys uh just a brief uh, intersection a quick reminder that you can now support the channel by joining with the uh, membership for youtube and uh, if it's too much for you and i can understand this this is pln by the way but you will see your own uh, currency you can also support me by buying me a coffee here at buy me a coffee in, or in slash cyber potato uh, the people that uh, supported me one or the other way will get the priority when it comes to the suggestions for the next videos also uh, there's a discord right now for you a uh, link will be in the description uh, one thing that you have to do when you log in is to read through the rules then click on the potato here below and you will get the access to the whole server thank you very much and let's go back to the video and the last part that we have to add to our wonderful uh, controller is ability to jump but we will try to do it smart uh, so actually let's go to the input right here and let's listen for the jump input so input is action just pressed 
gap and we'll call a function called begin gap and to be honest um how uh, i got to that's code is uh, by searching through internet and watching a few other videos of how to make the the jump as smooth as possible uh, unfortunately i do not remember the channels on on which i found the solution uh, but yeah that's definitely not mine uh, but can do begin jump and say that the playback can be get from animation tree current state playback path and that playback object will allow us to travel through animation state uh, so basically to allow us to um, trigger the transitions that are enabled here so we can manually trigger that transition from blend space 2d to jump start and then from lie that shouldn't be lie idle that should be jump idle Okay, I hope that fixes this. So we can use that playback object to manually travel where we have the um, the transitions enabled. So I can just say playback, travel, and we need to travel to jump start. And I'm also going to create another function here and i will say uh function apply jump velocity and for now i'm going to pass and we will trigger this function via animation event so let's talk a little bit about those Let's go to animation player and open animation tab and let's find jump start okay so maybe i'll be able to show it to this to you it's not going to play the animation because we have active animation mixer here uh, let's try this again okay so here you can see animation and there's a specific moment right when we would like to basically um, apply the velocity to our player and move him up not at the very start because as you can tell he's doing a little bit of preparation like bending his knees and stuff like that before he actually jumps okay so let's trigger this on and then uh, or maybe not yet so here in our animation I have to find the specific moment that seems to me is going to be the right one to apply the um, the animation to change the snap to 0 0.5 to make it more granular I'm going to say about here okay we should trigger that function so how to do this we can just add track and there's going to be call method track and i will choose the player because that's where we have the script let's scroll this to the bottom and then we need to insert the key and from the keys, we will choose apply jump velocity where we will apply the velocity. So let's do that. And now you can see that in that moment of animation, we will call the apply jump velocity. So going back to our code, that means that in that moment of animation, we'll trigger that function. And here, I will just have 
jump queued variable that will trigger as a switch to trigger the jump so jump to it is equal to true and then we have to handle all of this in our uh, in our um, in our physics process I will also add another flag here whether our character is falling um, and you see yeah I believe that's going to be all so now it's time to write it let's see in our uh, in our physics process we get the input we calculate the rotation so probably below that we can handle the jumping and i'm going to basically write a function for that handle jumping right and maybe even make our code a little bit better because so i would say handle rotation I'll pass delta here and I will get those lines and cut them here into handle rotation and I'm going to call handle rotation uh, with delta now it's I, I will advise you to keep the process and physics process as clean uh, and as readable as possible so let's add handle jumping here okay so what do we know for sure we should constantly apply the gravity to our player it doesn't matter if he's on the ground the gravity pushing him down when he's on the floor doesn't really matter we will check if he's not on the floor. Hopefully we have a function for that. If he's not on the floor and if jump quit, then we can, if he's not on the floor, we can reset the jump quit and set it to false. And then if he's not fall falling, We can say that uh, he is actually falling. It is equal to true. And we can get the playback. Node state machine playback and you can see how I am using autocomplete here um, this is called I believe a fuzzy, ser fuzzy search uh, I know what I'm searching for and I'm just using the first letters to basically find um, the autocomplete class as fast as possible so I just wrote any NSM to find it and if I would add P that would just limit itself to what I need so this is pretty cool feature of the Godot editor. And then I can say playback travel jump idle. Okay, so that's gonna make us travel from jump start to um, jump idle. Then else if if we're actually falling, oops, if falling, I can reset the falling. And this is the indicator that we have landed. So playback again. Um, and I can just copy this. And say playback travel j 
jump land okay so this is a setup of our animations there's one thing that we need to handle of course and this is um the applying the up we have to apply the uh, velocity so jump create uh, velocity y and here we will apply our velocity is equal to um, we need some kind of jump force so let's export that and the value i use is 150 but you can of course adjust that to your need so this is jump force and since we are jumping uh, and applying this velocity we should say that jump create is no longer no longer set and we are of course falling and let's see whether this is enough to make it work so it seems we have broken everything with our code okay let's see what might be happening here okay so one mistake that we have is in our get input function we are actually not making any use of the stored velocity so velocity ingress is equal to foul ingress so this is one of the problems and yet still nothing is going on and this is of course because I did not enable the uh, animation tree the animation mixer section let's try this again okay so I am moving and I am jumping and if I switch the, to the fox state, I can jump too. So this is cool. But we will have one problem. If I restart, you can see that even though I didn't press space, I am jumping at the very beginning. And this is, uh, that took me quite some time to figure out. And this is because basically the move and slide is using the velocity from the like a previous frame to run itself not from the actual frame and that's why it will jump at the start because it will think that the velocity uh, y is incorrect so to fix this i can just move uh, move the move and slide call function before i do anything else in physics process and if I'm correct, this will prevent that initial jumping back. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is it. There you have it. The very simple, uh, kind of cute, uh, tunish uh, poor man's Elden Ring movement. And um, let me know if you would like me to continue on that series because there's a lot of stuff that we can add like inventory, um, the attacking movement, uh, health bar, enemies, of course, the whole fighting procedure, and then building a, a, a simple dungeon level. Um, thank you for that. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe. We're getting close to, I believe, 3,400 subscribers, subscribers, and uh, that's really great for me. Uh, I love doing those tutorials and I hope I can provide you with more about Godot. See you. Bye.